Hi, Carl Tolbert, uh, Malloy Electric, here to present an interesting training. The identification of control panel components for conversion. The motivation is to offer a few work through examples of identifying components used in constructing UL508A VFD and control panels. The, the audience is anyone uh, new to the industry or just simply needing a refresher. Now, the examples are from the web because I uh, wanted to show a diversity of design based on two criteria. The first one being the component choice, of course, because all designers choose different things. And then um, secondly, the nuanced approach of the designer is almost uh, like a signature because every designer is different. So I wanted to actually showcase that as well. So, but let's get started. So this is the first example of a control panel with the PLC uh, and drives. So we're just gonna start going through the components. The first one obviously is the PLC. And it's kind of like, uh, think about the PLC programmable logic controller as the brains of the operation. Then we have relays and contactors, fuses and distribution. We have a safety relay, not always present because not all systems need safety controls. Ethernet switch, uh, primarily to allow the PLC to communicate to the drives in this case. And, and some systems will have HMI, they'll have uh, remote IO and other things to communicate over the, the, the Ethernet, uh, depending on the protocol and the PLC type, of course. Power supply, 24 volts, uh, power generally about 120 volts. And we'll see some other examples where there's not a control transformer here. So in this case, we do have a control power transformer is number seven, which takes 460 volts single phase in this case and converts it to 120 volts. Well, the power supply is number six, takes that 120 volts and produces 24 volts DC. Uh, generally to uh, power the PLC and other uh, parts of the control circuit. Then we have the VFDs themselves. In this case, they're Rockwell 525s, you know, micro drives, and then, of course, the terminals. Well, we don't see here also, we don't see the protection, the isolation, the disconnect, and possibly if the, um, the 525s had any type of reactors or any type of filtering in those parts of the design, but this is a very simple, straightforward uh, panel to kind of get us started. And the next one's a little more uh, densely designed. So again, number one, the PLC, um, this is an automation direct design, so you're gonna see a lot of different components than the, the first example. Then we have starters. Now starters have two specific uh, designs. One is traditional like these ones where you have a contactor and an overload relay below it. And some of the more modern designs that came up through the idea of a combination design is you have a motor starter protector on top of the contactor. And, and the reason why is it's, it kind of emulates um, some of the uh, short circuit protection capabilities of a traditional molded case circuit breaker. And then when within certain codes like Article 430, you can get a group motor rating so you don't have to use fuses. So there's this a whole play designers sometimes take uh, on these designs. Then we have, of course, the miniature circuit breakers, the cooling system, the fans and the vents that you'll see on the, the left and right hand side, the ethernet switch, just like the first example, the Power supply, same thing. It takes 120 volts and converts it into 24 volts DC. Then we have a control tr power transfer, which is uh, takes 460 volts single phase and converts it to 120 volts. The VFDs, in this case, are six uh, Delta drives or uh, Durapulse drives for automation direct, I mean. And then you have terminal blocks and then the isolator or disconnect. Now the next example is another Rockwell example. It's really clear, so I do like the picture. It's a similar design. You have the PLC here, and number one, then you have molded uh, MSPs, motor starter protectors. So MSPs mentioned earlier were part of the starter designs. You know, they sit on top of a contactor, but they can be used because they do have short circuit capabilities as protection of drives, depending on the drive design in the manufacturer's UL ratings. Okay, now from a pure engineering design, I'm not a huge fan of this, but this is kind of a tangential argument. But in the case here, Rockwell often uses MSPs as protection for their micro drives, like in this case, in this design. 
you have uh, more MSPs there, then you have uh, miniature circuit breakers, safety relay, Ethernet switch, the power supply again. Uh, in this case, you'll notice there's no uh, control power transfer um, because the power supply is actually taking the three phase 460 volt directly in and producing 24 volts uh, from that on its, its own merit. So it's, it's a specific special design. Generally, you know, more expensive, but uh, if you're not using 120 volts in your design, it's, a, it's an easy segue a designer can use to produce control voltage. There's your uh, disconnect. In this case, it's a molded case circuit breaker and acts as your, your main uh, protection of the system as well as the isolation point. You have your eight, uh, again, PowerFlex 525 drives and your terminals. All right, so the next example, we actually see the door included to kind of get some other details of the components that you may see. Again, the first thing in this case is a Siemens PLC. You have some starters in there, the, the, the newer type, the more combination designs with the MSPs on top of the contactors. In this case, we have an HMI that goes with the PLC, uh, another safety relay. Uh, ice cube relays for interposing uh, control power supply, uh, breaker and isolator, control control power transformer, terminals, and then we in this case we have pilot lights. Now pilot lights are really interesting because you can have things like, um, you know, push buttons obviously, selector switches, uh, indicator lights, combinations, there's all kinds of special types of pilot devices, including things like uh, potentiometers, uh, and other, other push-pull and e-stop control devices. Then our last example, this a uh, little bit different here. We're going to look at cooling basically on the door. Also includes the door in this example, top and bottom. The motor starter protectors, again, here also used to protect the drives. In this design, there's two drives and a starter. So there's three sets of pilot lights you'll see a little bit later your molded case circuit breaker, your distribution block, your contactor, your starter used uh, as, uh, uh, I can only assume the design, you know, they needed two VFDs to control speed and they need a third uh, motor control. So they chose a starter because they didn't have to vary the speed nor did they have to they add some type of soft starting mechanism uh, on this design. Control power transformer. There's your uh, isolating disconnect the drives, obviously, the terminals, relays, and of course your pilots. So again, this is a brief overview of uh, the components, but as you start looking through the examples, one after another, the components start becoming consistently the same, right? But you can add things like pneumatic valves, you can have soft starters, you can have all other types of monitoring and specialty components, depending on what industry you're in. Uh, but it really comes down to these components that we demonstrate that these aesthetic examples are the reoccurring ones you'll see over and over again used in almost every UL5080 design specifically for VFDs. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Uh, ask me any questions. Email me or give me a call. Thank you.